The Bamboo Lab A1 and P1P are among the most popular 3D printers today, but for very different reasons. With the same build volume, why would people pay $339 for one and $499 for the other? In this video, we'll start a print on each one of these machines, review their specs, and compare the results to determine which offers the best value and produces the better result. And if you have other comparisons in mind, let me know in the comments. After all, it was your comments that asked for this comparison. All right, it's Bed Slinger versus Core XY time. I downloaded this cool low poly flexible elephant that my wife picked out from Maker World, and I think it should be perfect for highlighting the abilities of each printer to print smaller details, as well as their speed and quality. Both prints used Bamboo Labs basic PLA, the A1 in a stunning bronze, and the P1P in a gleaming gold. They're both beautiful filaments. Each printer performed its calibration prior to printing, and I should mention also that this is the A1 that I received last year for review, and it has hundreds of hours of printing on it, while this P1P just showed up. It's brand new, and in fact, this is the very first print from it. So this should be pretty interesting. And of course, I'll have links to the models, the printers, and the filaments, all of that in the description and on the screen like normal. Let's talk specs, starting with the Bamboo Lab A1. First off, the basics. This is your classic bed slinger design. The build plate moves along the Y axis while the print head handles the X axis and it moves up and down on the Z axis. It's a tried and true setup, reliable and simple. The build volume is a very medium sized 256 millimeter cubed area. It's pretty common. In fact, uh, all Bamboo Lab printers right now are this size save the uh, A1 Mini, it's a little bit smaller. One of the standout features of the A1 is how quiet it is. Because of its motor noise canceling technology, it's one of the quietest printers that I've ever used. And that's a big plus if you're running prints overnight or if you're in a shared space. With a 300C hot end and a 100C build plate, it easily handles most standard filaments. Um, it's primarily designed for like PLA, PTG, and TPU. Um, so it's at least it's very versatile for a wide range of projects that you might be doing um, at home or in the office. This A1 is actually packed with impressive sensors, including flow and pressure sensors in the print head. These help automatically adjust filament flow while it's printing on the fly, and it also helps uh, detect any potential tangles or jams, um, ensuring uh, consistent print quality. And on top of that, it comes with a low frame rate 1080p camera for remote monitoring and capturing time lapses. I think that kind of adds to both the convenience and a little bit of uh, fun uh, to your 3D printing experience. And did I forget to mention speed? I think I did. Uh, it has a maximum print speed of 500 millimeters per second. And like I've said in other videos where we've included the A1 as a comparison, you'll likely be printing around that 300 millimeters per second range. Last, the touch interface. It's pretty small, so if you have big fingers, it'll be an issue. But uh, other than that, it's, it's nice and simple, clean and clear, no complaints. Okay, now the specs for the Bamboo Lab P1P. This printer is a favorite in 3D print farms and manufacturing setups, no doubt because of its excellent capabilities and its skeletonized Core XY design. You can pack these machines in super tight together and everything is easily accessible without an enclosure getting in the way. The P1P is the same 256 millimeter cube build volume like the A1, but it uses a Core XY design and the Z axis, the build plate, actually drops away from the tool head, which offers increased stability and printing speeds. In fact, when it comes to speed, the P1P has a definite edge over the A1. Its default profiles inside Bamboo Studio, the slicer, are close to 25% faster on average, making it a solid choice for print farming or if you simply just want your prints faster. This is mostly due to the P1P having twice the acceleration of the A1, despite them having the same maximum advertised print speeds of around 500 millimeters per second. In terms of material versatility, because the P1P features the same 300, 100 combination for the nozzle and the build plate, it is designed for PLA, PETG, and TPU as well. But as you can see, you can put an enclosure on this, which means it can handle ABS, ASA, and even polycarbonates, opening up even more project possibilities. Let me also add that you can print ABS without an enclosure, just keep it in a warm environment and free from any drafts of air. Also, you, maybe some bed adhesive to hold down the prints, keep them from warping. The P1P comes unenclosed by default, but you have options. You can purchase an enclosure separately from Bamboo Lab, or you can even print your own with designs that range from fun themes like Pokemon to retro, sci-fi, and even a huge selection of gaming styles. And most of these are designed by the community. As for the interface on the P1P, 
it is quite a bit more basic. Uh, it's a click wheel style design. This bothers some people, but I don't find it an issue at all. Mostly because you rarely interact with the Bamboo Lab printer through their interface. It's mostly done through Bamboo Studio on your desktop or the Bamboo Handy app on your mobile device. Let's touch on the Amos units for both printers. Each printer is multicolor capable with the addition of a Bamboo Lab AMS. That's their automatic material system. The A1 series uses the AMS Lite, which is a freestanding four spool system that allows for multicolor prints as well as auto switching from one spool to the next when a spool runs out of filament. The P1P uses the original AMS, which is a bit more robust. It has all the functions of the AMS Lite, and it even offers more enhanced capabilities for more complex and colorful projects. The AMS is enclosed to help protect filaments and even allows daisy chaining multiple AMSs together with the use of the AMS hub for a total of up to 16 spools of filament at a time. Unfortunately, the AMS Lite does not have daisy chaining capabilities, so you're just limited to those four colors, but there is two ports on these A1 series printers, and wouldn't that be something? How cool would that be? Bamboo, let us have one more, maybe eight, I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. Now, let's compare the print results. The A1 completed the print in eight hours and eight minutes, while the P1P finished quite a bit faster at six hours and 46 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, that is mostly due to the higher accelerations on the P1P. Both printers were printing uh, the same slice speeds of around 200 to 300 millimeters per second for the inner and the outer walls, infill, etc. This is the flexible elephant that came off of the Bamboo Lab A1 here. And pulling it off the build plate, um, I have to say that the joints on this one, they all work, right? Um, they, they were a little bit more stiff, um, I'd have to say, than, than I initially thought they would be. I think the print looks great. Trunk bends, all the joints work, feet, everything, ears, and you'll be seeing some up close uh, B-roll of it. Um, I think it turned out really good. I think the print quality is nice on it. I can see that there's just slight, ever so slight ringing. Um, that's to be expected from a bed slinger. Um, but other than that, I think if you're seeing any weird lines in the, uh, the B-roll, I think it's just the lighting in here is kind of accentuating those. But I promise you in person, it looks really freaking fantastic. And like I said, I think that the small parts and the joints um, show that the printer is very capable of printing uh, objects at high speed and producing great quality results. So very, very, very happy um, with the uh, elephant from the A1. All right, here is the flexible elephant from the Bamboo Lab P1P. Now, Initially, looking at it on the build plate, I'll be honest with you, it, of course, accelerations were higher on this machine, and it did print, what, an hour and a half or something faster um, than this one. And to be honest with you, you can tell. Um, I can see that there is some ringing, and I can see that there's a little bit less cooling uh, happening on some of these, these joints right here, um, and I guess on the underside of the elephant. And I'll tell you that this, right? So the back joints, they work, right? The feet work tail works, trunk works, head works, right? Uh, head's a little bit stiffer. There, head's a little bit stiffer, but here's the thing. This joint right here is not bending. And I, I mean, I, I suppose I can make it bend. Mm, I don't know, I'm kind of afraid. I'll have to grab a set of pliers or something and I'll make it bend and we'll, and we'll, we'll figure it out. But I can tell that the this one was printing faster and I'd have to say that the overall quality results between the two um, at their respective speeds, right? So this was printing two to 300 millimeters per second. That was printing two to 300 millimeters per second. But the P1P has it, it had its accelerations at 10,000 and the accelerations on the A1 were I believe at 6,000. So quite a bit faster in accelerations here. And I think it shows a little bit in the print quality, but you can turn this down if you want. So that, that's not a problem. You could even turn this one up. And so looking at the print quality, um, I have to say they're both really fantastic. So I don't think um, the conclusion from this video should be that either one of them has better print quality. I think they're about the same. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't think Bamboo Lab is gonna be putting out machines that sacrifice print quality um, for speed. It's just not gonna happen. Tell me what you think. Now, I'm showing you B-roll of both of these. Tell me in the comments below which one you think is the better print, because ultimately, it's your money. You're the judge. I think it's cool. I can play some elephants. I think they're pretty awesome. 
Good job, Mrs. LM, on picking a cool, fun, a cool, fun model. Matter of fact, I should print it bigger. That's what we should do. All right, now let's talk about pricing and value. The Bamboo Lab A1 comes in at $339, offering a fantastic entry point for those new to 3D printing or hobbyists looking for a reliable and quiet machine that delivers that consistent quality. You're getting one of the most advanced 3D printers on the market. Um, the quality of the prints are incredible, and the only real negative is that you don't have an option for an enclosure to print more exotic filaments. Now, the Bamboo Lab P1P, it's priced at $499, provides more speed and versatility, especially with the option to print higher temperature materials when it's enclosed. It's a solid investment for those who need faster prints and broader material compatibility, and for those who might want to build out a print farm. Considering the features and performance, both printers offer pretty excellent value for their respective price points. Your choice ultimately depends on what features matter most to you, be it the speed, uh, maybe the noise levels, uh, material versatility, uh, maybe the budget, or of course, print quality. The truth, I don't think that you can go wrong with either one of these printers. And remember, you can always have more than one. I do have to mention the Bamboo Lab P1S here, which is the enclosed version of the P1P. And we'll be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of these two printers uh, here shortly. So make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you'll get the notification when the video uploads. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And a big special shout out to our amazing Patreon and YouTube members. I couldn't do this without you. Also, YouTube thinks you want to watch this one right here. The algorithm thinks this video is interesting. You should click it. You should go watch it. We'll see you on the next one.